the August 2020 update introduced new conditional models to roof pieces, which enable new types of roof bunkers. A first roof fully blocks the passage into the inside of the bunker. If you place another roof 90 degrees rotated, a gap opens, allowing you to pass through. I expected a flurry of base builds using this design, only to see them patched with a September 2020 update. To my surprise, neither happened. The bunker was nerfed but not patched. And I saw much fewer builders using this than expected. Maybe that is a consequence of the fact that the bunker is quite bulky and unexpectedly hard to integrate in an elegant way. In this video I will show you how to build the Chet Shed. A dead simple yet tanky 2x2 base using two of those bunkers. It is targeted at solos and duos who want to focus on the action rather than building. The design and the build steps are optimized to be as straightforward as possible, even if that's sometimes meant to use less advanced solutions. You start out with this 2x2 starter base. Then you add the roof bunker onto the last square and a raised airlock in front of it. Like any standard 2x2, you can honeycomb it at your own pace to make it even stronger. And if you get rich enough to armor the core and sheet metal the honeycomb, a brute force raid through walls will cost 23 rockets. At this point you can add the second bunker to push the cost of a door raid to up to 30 rockets. This bunker uses an updated design as shown by XRAW and Toadlord and can be opened from both sides despite the September 2020 update. And the best part is, you're not even required to look for blueprints. Garage doors are highly recommended but not strictly necessary. Shotgun traps can be useful to auto-close the bunkers. Otherwise you can spend your scrap elsewhere. This is the cost and the upkeep if you make the recommended upgrades. The daily upkeep can be basically covered by farming one stone node, three metal nodes and a bit of recycling. And if you can handle a higher upkeep, I'll show you how to add another layer of honeycomb. If you use the Builder Sanctuary build server, you can spawn that base via the code that is now on screen. I'd like to thank Alpha Fox, Dr. Slayer, Cubius, Lord Desert and Toad Lord for the feedback on the different design decisions and release candidates. Let's get on with it. Optionally test whether the footprint fits. Start off with a 2x2 relatively low to the ground, surrounded with triangles. The triangles adjacent to one foundation need to be raised, one on the side and two on the other side. From that outer raised triangle, continue with a lowered square, then one lowered and two raised triangles. This will eventually be your main exit. Let me destroy everything but the squares of the 2x2. Surround this square with walls. Place the TC into the right corner. Close it off with a double door and use it for your starter items. Extend the base into a 2x1. Use this space for furnaces and your sleeping bags. Then turn on the base into an L shape. Use that last square for utility items. If you make your workbench here, it will block people from running in, creating a makeshift airlock. Eventually, replace the workbench with a tier 2. As you accumulate more metal fragments, replace all doors with sheet metal double doors. Then clear out the items from the first square and turn it into your main loot room. In the description you will find a link to a step-by-step -step guide on how to place those items. This completes the starter unit. Next, we're going to turn this starter unit into a viable 2x2 starter base with the first roof bunker. Add one raised triangle to the right and cap it off. In front of the exit, add two raised and one lowered foundation. Honeycomb the back of the main loot room. Next to it, create an airlock with two single doors. In front of them, add another double door and close off the space next to it.
Outside of that double door, place a lowered square foundation to make it easier to jump into the base. We're now ready to place the roof bunker. Take a roof and place it onto that empty square. You will need to replace this double door with a garage door or remove it, otherwise you won't be able to jump out of the base. Here I will be replacing all double doors with garage doors. The ceiling above the bunker is still open. Surround the roof with half walls and close off the ceiling. This looks like regular honeycombing, but we can still use it as an attic. Fill that space with boxes and a repair bench. You may have to close the garage doors below, since otherwise they can interfere with the item placement. You can also turn one or two of those compartments into an old style unlootable. If you code lock those boxes, raiders will have a hard time retrieving the loot stash without blowing through a sheet metal building block. With that amount of drop boxes, you should never run out of space. This is of course a very minimal use of the roof honeycomb. For the same cost, you could use full walls and gain a lot more storage. You could even include a roof exit, in case you want to add a shooting floor at some point. Whatever you do, never place any wall or door frame where the bunker roof ends. That would close the bunker for good. Here we will be going with half walls to keep a lower profile. If you can, deploy a shotgun trap. It will shoot out the twig and thus close the bunker if someone without building privilege tries to go deep. It probably does not hurt to deploy a second trap behind this door as a fallback option. Remember to always keep a bit of wood spare in your base. Placing a roof triangle is 25 wood. In case you have the blueprint, upgrade this wall and deploy a dropbox against it. If the bunker is closed, the dropbox is accessible from both sides, allowing you to pass wood into the base in case you run dry. One thing that might concern you is that currently the twig sticks out of the base. However, I was only able to destroy it with rockets. If you're worried about that, place two additional raised foundations here to cover it. This concludes the second phase of the build. You now have a 2x2 starter base with a working roof bunker. The base is currently extremely weak, so let's increase its protection. I would continue with honeycombing the base. At those open sites, add three foundations and floor tiles above them. Then fill them in with walls. At the side with the raised triangle, upgrade this half wall to sheet metal. Then honeycomb those remaining two triangles as before. At first you will probably use stone. Eventually you can upgrade the outside to sheet metal. However, before spending metal fragments on the honeycomb, I would recommend to upgrade the inside of the base first. You should definitely upgrade to armor, the floor tiles above the core, the wall that leads to the main loot room, the roof bunker, and the raised foundation next to it. The remaining walls and foundations should be upgraded to at least sheet metal. Later you may want to upgrade at least the inner 2x1 or even the whole core to armored. In the airlock in front of the bunker, upgrade to sheet metal. The two raised foundations, the wall to the right, the ceiling and the honeycomb in front of the double door. Then upgrade the whole attic to sheet metal as well.
Once the honeycomb is upgraded to sheet metal, a brute force raid to the TC costs about 22 to 23 rockets. With these upgrades, the door raid path is again the weak point. 18 rockets and a bit of explosive ammo will get raiders to the TC. Thus, let's create an extended airlock with a second roof bunker. Place a lowered and two raised triangle foundations at the end of this square. Upgrade that square to sheet metal. On each side, place a sheet metal full wall and a half wall. On those raised triangles, create an airlock with two single doors and three windows. If you use shop fronts on those triangle, place the left one first. If you place the right one first, the game won't allow you to place the left one. I use shop fronts because they do not require any blueprints. However, if you can, use windows with reinforced glass. Not only does this save metal fragment upkeep, but you can cover them with wooden shutters so that raiders don't see that they are facing a bunker. In front of the airlock, you might have to add a foundation or an object to be able to make the jump. Close off the ceiling. Now let's add the second bunker. Above the square, attach a sheet metal floor at half height. Use the space below for drop-off chests. If you have the blueprint, add a shotgun trap to the wall. Then close that space off with a low wall to prevent people from crouching underneath that floor tile. Replace this double door with a garage door. Then place a roof piece onto that floating floor tile. Open it by placing a roof triangle on the left side. If possible, deploy another shotgun trap in this corner to destroy the twig if somebody without building privilege tries to go deep. And if that twig gets shot out while you're roaming, you can open this bunker from the outside as well. Simply jump into this triangle and place the twig roof triangle from below. For better mobility, I would usually cover this hole with another twig floor tile. Congratulations, you're now the proud owner of a strong and cost-efficient 2x2 double bunker base. Next, I will show you my suggestions for how to efficiently arrange the items inside of the core. The placement is optimized so that you can replace all doors without picking up items. Underneath the roof bunker, you can place one large box, a furnace and a small box. Double check that you can still place the twig roof. You can use the same item placement strategy for the space underneath the second bunker roof. Once you have the tier 3 workbench crafted, clear out the square in front of that roof. Place the workbench flush against the back of the wall and as far to the left as you can. Then take a research table and place it against this wall as close to the tier 3 as possible. I had to destroy the twig to be able to place it. If done well, you can even still replace the garage door. Now squeeze one small box below the tier 3. Then place two large boxes in front of it. Turn around the tier 3 and squeeze a campfire into this corner. There should be enough space for a small box here. Move the shotgun trap further back for better mobility. Finally, these are my suggestions for the space in front of the main loot room. Place a locker into this corner as far to the left as you can. If placed well, you can squeeze a furnace into the space between the locker and the main loot room and still be able to replace the door. Another two furnaces will fit against this wall. Two sleeping bags can go into the empty space without blocking the door. If you are a trio, you can squeeze a third bag in, but you will need to pick it up to replace the door. Of course, feel free to ignore my suggestions and arrange the core as you like. Last but not least, let me show you how to optionally add another layer of honeycomb. This way, you can match the cost of a wall raid with the cost of a door raid. In-game, I would only do that if you already know that someone is targeting you. On top of the roof, add another layer of half walls around the 2x2 and the airlocks. Again, make sure to never place a wall above the end of the roof bunker. At the rear corners, add a square and a triangle and close them off. 
at the front, add a triangle, square, triangle to also cover the side of the first bunker. Then cover the sides of the 2x2 with triangles. Cover the airlock as well. If made out of stone, this honeycomb pushes the minimum rate cost to 27 rockets. If you upgrade it to sheet metal, it's 31 rockets. Nevertheless, in game I would leave that honeycomb layer out to save cost and to keep a lower profile. Better use those materials to build a second base. As always, I hope you found this video helpful. Please remember that all my bases are platforms and never hesitate to adapt them to your needs. Take care, Evil Wurst, out.